What's the crack everybody? My name is Bobber and this is the Stanley Parable. In this game, I don't really know what it's about. I'd like to give a description, but nope. Um, it was recommended to me by my friend Nicky. In the description will be a link to his channel. He makes really cool Super Smash Bros. videos with his uh, friend Tyler. They talk about loads of different characters and game reviews and just, just check it out. You'll see what I mean. Um, so yeah, that's in the description. But as much for this game, I haven't a clue. I know it's a short enough game because I was doing practicing for the recording, just to make sure everything was going smoothly, and I accidentally done one of the endings. So not gonna talk about that much. But um, yeah, let's just get on with the game. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. You don't tell me what to do. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? Exactly. He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. No. Nope. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Is it over? the hell? I think I just won. Oh, wow. Well. That wasn't like that last time. The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be alone ever again. Is there any reason the floor is covered in paper? Hey. Um, this game is weird. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I don't know. This one seems more tempting. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yep. That's all I'm gonna do. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating, that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, 
Here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. <laughs> Definitely, 100%. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy <laughs> and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. <laughs> okay, let's go. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Nope. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years <laughs> ago. Ooh, can I got you here? No. Um... Penalty for jumping off cargo lift. Five grand. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize okay. investing no, no, no. in your trust. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. Yep. Well, that just happened. <laughs> How could I be bad at a game like this? It's a story-based game. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh, look, there's no paper on the floors anymore. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Is this it here? Yeah, it's the main room. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. There is literally nothing to do in this room. I'm sure if I read all the stuff on the boards, they'd be funny, but I'm not going to do that. Right, come on, we go. Stairs, okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Downstairs. He said to go downstairs? Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. Why is it all red? Uh, never mind. Okay. Oh, a car. Can I get into it? But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility nope. of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head <laughs> dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. 
And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Okay, I had to cut him off. I was down there for, I'd say, at least 15 minutes after when I cut off. And good Jesus, he just kept on going on and on. I, I, I just had to leave. Like, I don't care if there was the best ending after that. It was just... Holy Jesus. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Fancy. Okay. What's through here? Absolutely nothing. It's this way. Okay. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 28 Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Oh. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Oh. Hmm. Where do I go? Oh, that looked shifty. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, come on, we go. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Interesting. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. What the hell? Yeah, I'm gonna have to pass. No, I'm gonna go back. No. I wanna go back. Damn it. Okay, let's just do this place. Why is it so dark? The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Imagine, like, hooking up a Nintendo 64 or something to this and playing Mario Kart all day. Oh, that'd be brilliant. All of those screens, holy Jesus. What does this do? Now the monitors oh, jumped Christ, to life, that's their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Did I go back to the numbers? I want to see if I can find my screen. What was it, 427? Come on. There we go. Four... 27, there. That's my office. Cool. I honestly expected something to happen. Hmm. Okay, let's go. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? What happens if I don't go? I mean, there's not a whole lot for me to do. Ah, we just go. No! He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? What is but this here was game? the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. 
happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life, for he would dismantle the controls once and for all. I have actually no idea what I'm doing. Okay, I found something. This has the number one on it, so I'm gonna press it. And this has number two. Where is number three? Ah, here we go. Number three. Number four. And number five. And number five. I don't know what I was expecting to happen, but it was more than that. Well, let's just go in here. Now this would be the room you'd hook your Super Mario 64 up to. Look at the size of that, good Jesus. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Well... This one. Oh, Stanley. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Exactly. Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. Oh, crap. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are. A moment of solace before you're obliterated. Sake. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, okay. Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or More what or less, you're supposed yeah. to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones. Or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. 
Why would you think that, Stanley? I don't know. That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you button. have any idea what your purpose in this place is? No. <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. You're telling me. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. More or less. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless to see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every Five, second of your inevitable four, life from three, the moment we fade in two, until the moment four, I say happily ever happy up. Happy New Year. Did I win? I think I won. Come on, loading screen. No, like, really, hurry up, come on. So is that it? That's... Okay. <laughs> Joe, I'm gonna end this video here. I... I don't even know anymore. This game is... Yeah. <laughs> There's not many words I can use to describe it. It's, it's so strange. Okay. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like or subscribe because each one would help very much. If you have any suggestions for games like seeing you play, leave them down there in the comments. Until next time, I'll talk to you all later. Good luck.